The devil is just toying around your life. And listen, some of you that nature it, you love it, you love, and then you are walking some way like this and say, Why say, Mrs. Is local? No, if Satan come to my way, see, no, I won't work for anything for him to be glorified. No, 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 it's not. So I'm living with my mother. Satan has attacked my body. Nobody in my family will sense it. They will not sense anything until that devil leaves. Because Satan, he tests Paul's. When you grow, you understand what I'm saying. So when he comes to test your boss with a blow, and he see you walking, ay, 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 Somebody was sick, came to his partner. The pastor told me where they are now. He said, Is it Chibudu who said it? We're in Amsterdam eating. He said, When you pray for the man, he said, huh. Now the headache is making me chew, 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 chew. <laughs> he said, The first time it was making boom, boom, but when you pray, it's making me chew, 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 chew. One of the powerful prayer in the Bible is called agreement prayer. When two church and agree, but the prayer will never work when you are not in agreement. Yeah. It will never work. That is why sometimes when I call some couples and ask them, how many children do you want? This one says four, this one says five. I stop praying for them because they are not in agreement. Because God will not violate your faith and your will. He will never violate your will. So when you don't want it, God will not force it on you. He went to his hometown and you could there do no miracle. Is it because Jesus' power has come down? No. The Messiah's anointing can never come down. But because of the fluctuation of your faith, it can affect God's visitation. So the way we people have stepped down, transformer to stabilize power, may you stabilize your faith. And grow in it. Too much faith fluctuation in our generation. Today you believe. Today you are not believing. Today you believe. Tomorrow you are not. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. Watch this. Give me Exodus chapter 15 verse number 26. Give it to me. Exodus 15 and 26. And it says, If thou would diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and would do that which is right in his sight, which means that there is a connection with sin and sickness. Every sickness is as a result of sin. Whatever sickness the enemy brings to us, he cannot bring the sickness unless he finds sin in our life. God said that if you diligently walk, hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandment, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the disease. This one eh, is a King James version. God said he has no sickness in heaven. So he said it's, it's not a right translation when they were translating this thing from the hebrew the word put there means that god of the sickness is going to give it but god cannot give sickness the right translation should be that i will permit i will put none of this disease upon you i will permit none of this disease because god can permit something or he will not permit it but your sin can let him permit something against his way I will permit none of the disease upon you which I have, I have permitted upon the Egyptian for I am the Lord that what? You didn't hear? I am the Lord that what? So who is your healer? The Lord told the Israelites in, in black and white, I am the Lord. Not your physicians. I am the Lord that healed you. So when you are sick, come to me. Now, I am going to give you the connection between sickness and sin. If only God has forgiven you your sin, then no devil must stop you from getting healed. Amen. And somebody are into my palm. Hmm. Hallelujah. Everywhere you see God forgiving people's since he also healed their sicknesses. Psalm 103 and verse number 3. Give me that scripture. Psalm 103 and verse number 3. David was talking about bless the Lord, oh my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. And forget not all his benefit. And when he came to him, he said, who forgiveth all thy what? 
What is iniquities? What is iniquities? The moment you forgive your niece, what's the next thing he did? Who what? So if Satan couldn't stop you from getting saved, he can't stop you from getting healed. Oh, let somebody say I'm into what I just said. Now, this I, I'm not preaching anything different. I'm preaching your rights. It is very sad to live in a country. The first time. Okay, to, to give that example, we travel with some people to uh, Israel. And you know, because of the way I live my life, and I have a very high standard. I don't know. God put good things in my eyes. I don't know why God made that mistake, but he keep doing that. So if you are following me to Israel, you sleep in a very powerful hotel. Are you getting the point now? Some of the guys, when they went, they, they sleep in a hotel. Their fridge, their things inside, they didn't know it. they should pay for it. To uncle no mobile and almost bought brand, brand, brand. Then some of them had to go and pay for it. So when we came to Jordan, then there was a very we sleep in a very powerful six-star hotel. Millennium Hotel. Girl, you were there. Now, when you get to some of those hotels, you put the car. The car is like a small. You see your ATM card. You, you open the door, you touch it, it opens, and then you put it there. Then it gives, it, it brings all the power. Because without that card, nothing will come alive. Some people sleep in the dark because they say they fear they'll pay light bay. <laughs> now, don't lie, because if you are there, you will do worse. Now, the hotel I'm talking is a very powerful hotel. Now, watch it. So, I saw that some people sleep in the dark, they were sweating. I think one of them went down and said, Our place, uh, we are sweating. <laughs> Now, it means that the people has a right, but they are not enjoying it. Healing is your right, but Satan can rob you of it. Oh, you are not listening to me. Give me Luke chapter 5, verse 17. Give me the book of Luke chapter 5, and let me read something. Verse number 7. Let me show you something Jesus Christ said. I'm talking about the connection between sin and sickness. Watch this. Luke 5, 17. And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees who... And doctors, also by the PR, doctors of the law, thank you for we. Doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Wow. He was preaching like this, like I'm preaching. Without laying hands on anybody, the power of God was present to heal. Today, may the power of God be present to heal. <laughs> Go to the next verse. That is not even what I'm looking for. I'm talking about the connection between sin and sickness. And behold, a man brought in a bed, a man, which was taken with palsy. It's like a paralysis or something. And they sought means to bring him in, to lay him before him. <clears throat> and when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let down the man through the tailing with his coach into the midst of the uh, into the midst before Jesus, which means that they climbed the roof, removed the roof, removed the ceiling, and start to lowering the man down. The man was paralyzed, so he couldn't walk. Check the next verse. Look at him. And and when Jesus saw their faith, so if you have faith, we will see it. Yes. Cannot be hidden. Faith is a soft time, so if you have it, to be seen. Now what is when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the man, "This is the faith. in order for the man to be healed, his sins must be forgiven." So the first thing Jesus said is not to heal the man. He said, Jesus said unto him, man, thy sins are forgiven you. I'm talking about the connection between sin and sickness. He said, the moment Jesus Christ pronounced him righteous, then nothing can stop him from getting healed. So if you are sitting here and you want to be healed today, then confess every hidden sin in your heart. If you are following somebody's husband, this is the time to repent out of it. If you have been stealing money in the office, this is the time to repent out of it. Every chronic sin must be repented before your sickness and your healing can be guaranteed. Wow. Once there is sin in your life, Satan has got a hook. He has got something to contain. He goes to the presence of God. He doesn't stay there for long. But anytime he goes, he goes to accuse people and come back quickly. He's called accuser of the brethren. Because of his sinful nature and because of the righteous nature of God, sin cannot stay in the presence of light for a long time. So Satan goes in a swift, but when he goes, he accuses you and come back. He's called accuser of the brethren. Now watch this. So Jesus Christ said that your sins are forgiven you. Then the Pharisees say, what is this? Go to the next verse. And the scribes and the Pharisees begin to reason. 
Like some of people are racing whilst I'm preaching. It is almost a How can you be preaching and be talking that we shouldn't go to hospital? What is it? If you don't have money to go, allow us to go and spend our money. Oh, don't worry, go and spend it. Go and spend it. Keep spending. If you even spend the money and you'll be healed, that will be fine. So people that spend their money and spend, spend. Satan stole all their money and they were not even delivered. So the people were reasoning, they were reasoning, saying, Who is this? We speak blasphemies. It means that how can you say you are forgiving people's sin? You are blaspheming. And the reason they said is that who can forgive sin by God? They didn't know that God is talking. Yeah. So, yeah. I and the Father are one. That is this man. Huh. Verse 22. But when Jesus perceived their thought, or sometimes I pick that in word of knowledge. People come around me immediately. I know what is there. My God will tell me this is what they are thinking. So Jesus perceived their thought and he answered and said unto them, What is what what reason in your heart? What are you reasoning in your heart? Whether it's easier or which one is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk, that you will know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin. He said unto the sick man of palsy, Now that your sins have been forgiven, I say unto you, Arise, take up your coach, and go to thy house. Verse 25. And what happened? And immediately. So today you are going to receive healing immediately. Once you confess your sin, give the Lord a clap of him and preach. Immediately. The man took up her. The man, the, oh, oh you, are, you are not clapping. Immediately. He took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house somebody say hallelujah i didn't hear you say hallelujah, hallelujah. one of the favorite scriptures in the bible that talk about healing and divine help it's a prophetic word from Isaiah chapter 53. in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse number five you will see the connection between sin and sickness once your sins have been forgiven nobody can stop you from getting healed so some of you are not living in sin and you are sick you are being robbed But he was wounded for what? Our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. The moment he forgave our iniquities. And, and, and what? The moment he was wounded for our transgression. Transgression is committing sins that you know they are sins, but you are committing them. So you are transgressing. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Iniquities are hidden sins in your heart. The ones who have committed no will and unknown will. So he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace. As a result of having a boyfriend who also has a wife, you don't have peace. The man has a key to your bedroom, but you don't have a key to his house. Because the wife is there. Look at this, sister, you were a suspect. Tell her. Ask her, do you want to be healed? Stop saying it. Some of you are not saying it. So, are you getting the point now? The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Anytime you are not walking right, you will not have peace in your heart. Righteousness is rooted in peace. One of the fruit of the spirit is peace. So, once you have the fruit of the spirit, you naturally enjoy peace. But if you are chasing somebody's wife, you can't have peace. On Sunday, I preached a message and I told them, I said, you can't touch a high tension and it will not kill you. And I told you that women are high tension. Monday, I'm going to show you some mysteries. I am going to give you 15 reasons why you shouldn't have sex with anybody who is not your wife. And I'll give you that, you see, huh, somebody said, but what about when I did it before I became born again, nothing happened to me. I'll give you some reasons. In the days of ignorance, God overlooks. But it's a place that grace can be redrawn. Let me not miss the message. Let me continue. Hallelujah. But the, the, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are what? <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. There is something I learned about God. God is not a past tense God. God is not a future tense God. If you are dealing with God and it's not now, it is not God. Watch this. If God said, you see the way he did it, he put your healing in the past. He put your healing in what? In the past. 
which connotes that you are not permitted to be sick. Because the thing you are trying to pay for, it has already been paid. The only way to claim something that belongs to you is that somebody has settled it cause. So he said, by whose stripes he were what? Healed. If you were healed, then you are healed now. If God said you are going to be healed, then it's future. That is why you can't hope for your healing. You might never be healed. Hope only sees the future. Hope is a, a good waiter, but a bad receiver. I'm not teaching people here looking at me some way. Oh, thank God. I know one day God is going to heal me. You will die in that sickness. I know one day God is going to heal me. Instead of saying, you have to say, I believe I am here. Matthew quoted this particular scripture in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 8 verse 17. You remember that scripture? Matthew quoted from this one. It might be fulfilled. Now before then, something is fulfilling means that Jesus did something that Matthew quoted. Give me verse 16. Give me verse 16 quickly. Verse 16. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were what? Possessed with what? Even this one, it's not correct. This translation is not correct. I'm correcting a lot of things in the Bible. This one, it's not a good word. A devil is a title for one person. So it was a wrong translation. A devil is one, but he has demons. So you can't say devils. You can't say, Muhammad cannot be two. You can't say presidents. Every country must have one president. And with ministers working under him. That is the only picture to understand this scripture. So when you read the Bible in the King James, the King James says devils. It is not the right translation. Let me see whether the new King James will correct it. Look. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many who were demon. But the other one said devils. Devil is a title for one one. The archangel that will come down. But he came with two thirds, one third of the angels. All of them became demons. But he himself cannot be a plural man. He's only one devil, but he works with demon. The reason why accident is in Afghanistan, and accident is in Togo, and it cannot be in Ghana, and accident is in Nigeria, and accident is in America, it's not because the devil is omnipresent. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? He is one devil, but he's using agent. So demons of accident can be in Togo, they can be in Afghanistan, causing different accidents. And the evening, when the evening had come, they brought unto many who were demon possessed. And he cast out the spirit with his word. And, alo- and he healed all. How many? Oh. Hey. These are very serious scriptures. So, oh, can I say this in a very low tone voice? Nobody ever came to Jesus for healing and he turned him down. Yeah. He healed how many? Today, if only you have sickness in your body, nobody must be left out of the healing. Amen. According to the word of the Lord. And when Matthew saw that Jesus is healing all the people, Lord, let this message penetrate into people's spirit. Amen. Now, this message I'm preaching, you don't need it for now, you need it for, for tomorrow. Because of Adam's stressing, Satan will always try to come to you with all kinds of sickness. If you know this scripture, you can knock him down every time he brings it. The demon that said, Paul, I know, Jesus, I know, they will know you too. Yeah. He himself took our infirmities and bare our hearts. Now, listen. Stand there, apostle. Stand there, prof. Stand there. This guy is carrying this load. Do you remember the word bear? It's another present word for what? But carrying it. And this man came back and took this one. So every sickness this man has, Jesus said, I have bear it. Now, this is, this is the key. This is the key. Anytime I'm sick, this is what I tell the devil, Satan, two people cannot bear something at the same time. According to this word. Now, listen. Let me give you one key here. Anytime you quote the scripture, whatever thing you hear that contradicts what the scripture is saying, either the scripture is lying or telling the truth, or that thing is lying or telling the truth, choose which one is telling the truth. He himself took our infirmities and bare 
our sickness. Now, two of them cannot bear. So when Jesus Christ was buried, when this man was burying it, Jesus Christ was free. The moment Jesus took it and buried it, this man must be free. So if Jesus Christ is burying it, then two of that cannot bear. Now listen, during the second world war, Hagen gave a picture. He said there was a woman when he tried, the people were throwing all kinds of bombs in Britain. People were going to hide in the shelter at the military camp. So they go there, when the bomb raid and things stop, then they come back to come and clean the debris. Then the people didn't see the woman for some time. So they thought the woman was dead. So all of them said, oh, this lady, oh, we can't see what's dead. So when they come around, he was around, hey, we thought you were dead. What is happening? You didn't come. He said, oh, no, 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 I'll be in my room sleeping. They said, huh? Sleeping in this bomb, he said, yes. So I read in my Bible that he neither slumber nor sleep. So I said, two of us cannot be awake. If he's awake, I have to sleep. May you receive your healing whilst God, the what God has paid for you, may you never pay. This is a simple revelation that knocked the devil out of your territory. Those of you are going to bed, you are not sleepy. So coming back to this scripture, two of us cannot bear the same sickness at the same time. If Jesus Christ bear it, then I am free. And somebody say, but what about the symptoms? Okay, simple. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I smell. I am moved by what God is saying. Amen. And once you keep saying it, Satan will just take his back and walk away. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. How many of you think, am I making Bible? Am I making Bible? Huh? Are you sure? Are you sure? Am I making Bible? I'm talking about the relationship between sin and what sickness. The relationship between sin and what sickness. So anytime he forgives your iniquities, he heals your diseases. Anytime, all the guys who walk around.